Hey there, everyone. Here on Objectivity, you probably think we're always going to be doing really old objects, but we've got something a bit different today, because while we're here visiting the Royal Society, there's been a big press conference and a big event, and it's all about this. This is Beagle 2. Well, it's a model of Beagle 2. This was a UK spacecraft that was sent to land on Mars. And in 2003, on Christmas Day, the whole world was watching as it came barreling down towards the planet. And then it went missing, and it was never heard from again. But just today, it's been revealed, because of a NASA orbiter over Mars, in fact, Beagle 2 made it to the surface. It's amazing. Jim, was, you were the head engineer, weren't you, at the time? Yes. Tell me honestly what you thought had happened. I didn't see why it wouldn't get to the surface, particularly. Uh, and what we've learned today, um, and demonstrated today, is that it did. The pressure that we had on the design of this, in terms of mass and volume and time and money, to get that far is absolutely remarkable. What do we see in this image, and what does it tell you? The sunlight is reflecting off the base, it's reflecting off it can reflect off solar panels. What we are very clear about is that it didn't open up fully. And this is the most frustrating scenario, is that it got that far. So one, two, three opened, and, yes. then, it, and then this one yes. didn't. Because if that, for communication, and people will say, how stupid to do this, but this is the antenna for the communication. And we looked at having a very simple sort of pop-up antenna here in the base. But it wouldn't have enough, a strong enough signal for us to, um, to be able to communicate with the orbiters. You know, to get to that point is the most frustrating, but it also demonstrates there was a soundness in the design that we had uh, to get that far through. But most disappointing as well, because to get so close to the completion is such a shame and, and um, disappointing for everybody, for Colin, who's no longer with us, of course. But he understood what we were doing and he, 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 he was not out of the loop in the technical decisions we were taking. For those who don't know, Jim's talking about Colin Pillinger, who was an amazing scientist and he was like the, the face and the, the driving force behind this project. And as a matter of fact, if James shows us over here, this, this painting has actually been brought here today by Colin's wife. This was actually from their home. This was a special painting done for them that showed what it would have been like if Beagle 2 had made it and all of those petals had unfurled on Mars. It's really nice to see this model, but you did bring one thing along today yes. which excites me even more. Could we have a look at that? Yes. D yeah. Can I pick it up? Yes. You trust me? Yes. <laughs> all right. Yes. I'll show, you, so. I'll show pe everyone the back first. That's the back of it. But if I turn this around now, Look at this. Look at that. You look nervous, Jim. You think I'm no, going to no, bring... No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> no you do. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell everyone what this is. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious what this is, but tell me why this is a bit more special. We actually have a, a stack of these panels, so there's obviously four, and we then have to put those through a rigorous test program, which includes vibrations that simulate launch, it includes shocks that simulate landing, and all the temperature variations that you get on the surface of Mars. So these were used to prove the design of these solar panels. They're manufactured from carbon fibre and it's on a honeycomb which is aluminium foil. You probably can't see it there but you might be able to see it better because that had to be a very smooth surface. You can see so the little, little quilting that you get on the back. Where does this live? Do you have this on, up on a wall or on a shelf or does it sit above your fireplace? And, until today it's been in the garage. This is, a, this is an amazing right. thing. What's it but, doing in the garage? Well, it comes out every now and again. Yeah? But, uh, <laughs> what do you like show off to visitors yeah, and things? Yeah, things like that. So, but I think, uh, following on from today's news, I think I'll, we're going to find a, a place of, of uh, high exposure. It's a lovely thing. It's got a lovely story. And it's got an even more amazing story now that we know that Beagle 2 did make it to the surface. Yeah.